right, so this presentation is called Smart Credentials Dumb Learners. In your program, it was dumb, Smart Credentials is a smarter learner. But given that we don't have any learners, or we do in the room. No, this is really like a twist on the point that I want to make at the end. So I'm going to try to go pretty quickly through um, the first two points. Thanks to Sharon and also Ildiko that uh, have helped because they, you filled up some of the things that I'm talking about. So I am a credentialing ecosystem mentalist. Who in the room could, could, could manifest, could, could assess that? Anyone? All right, I got a couple. Anyways, that means that I think a lot about building a credential ecosystem a lot. Um, I'm also a TEDx speaker for which I received an open badge. But the credential that I'm mostly proud of is the food sniper. Okay. So these are all things that matter to me more than my academic degree. And they help me tell my story. They're important for me and they may be meaningful for others that I engage with. So this gives me a bit of a twisted perspective on how I think about credentials. I will not be able to share everything about how I think about that, but uh, let's see. So I have a day job uh, in trying to turn credentials into opportunities. Um, I do that um, with an organization called Parchment, previously known as Digitary. It was an EU-based company that was acquired. Um, in other words, we issue digital diplomas and transcripts for many universities around the globe. And so we provide digital credentialing technologies to support micro-credentialing. We do that, we do the tech, the digital credentials part. And the way I think about micro-credentials here is a metonymy, which is a figure of speech that means the part for the whole. So I like this streetwise definition of ACRO of the relationship between micro-credentials and digital credentials. So a badge, which is a digital credential, is to the micro-credentials what the diploma is to the degree. Okay? So effectively, when I talk about micro-credentials, I talk about everything that goes into the learning design, the assessment, the delivery, and the recognition at the end. All right? A digital credential for me is just the thing at the end, the certification. So sometimes people use micro-credentials just to address the digital credentials, but that is a nuance that um, is important to keep in mind. In practice, you know, we help a lot of higher education institutions around the world issue their digital diplomas, credentials. Uh, we have a pretty big footprint. We work with all the public universities in Australia and New Zealand. We are onboarding, um, hopefully, all the post-secondary institutions in Canada. So these are two big national scales platform. In the US, we serve about 70% of all universities. And we have some interesting footprint in Europe, in Ireland, with the IOTs, Institute of Technologies, and some Ivy League schools in the UK. So we do things at scales. This is how you know, I and my organization contribute to uh, micro-credentials from the digital credentialing aspect. I do have a night hustle, which is really where I uh, come up with my superpowers. And this is really trying to build the global credentialing ecosystem across education and work. The way I do that is mostly trying to uh, figure out human coordination, um, working on technical standards in practice uh, by leading uh, work groups. Um, the W3C Verifiable Credentials for Education Task Force is a group that I now co-chair. I've held similar position in different standard development organizations that try to solve the interoperability problem with open standards. My caveat to that is that this is really about building consensus. So it's, it is a human coordination problem first. Um, part of building this interop layer uh, gets into very practical things like um, co-hosting PlugFests. Those are actually the most important pieces in going from technical specification to standards. So remember, standards only come through adoption. Everything else is just specifications. But we tend to confuse that. Sometimes we create a technical specification, we call it a standard. Not true. Different things. Um, I've also I've really reflected for a long time on open badges. I'm an original gangster of open badges, but I do believe that that uh, open standard originally brought in some interesting uh, features that were uh, future looking. And so badges, to me, are the ancestor of modern recognition technologies. 
including verifiable credentials. And some of the work that we are, we're doing recently within the W3C is really just helping open badges move into their next generation. So the ver version three of open badges, which was just released, it is a verifiable credential. So there's a convergence here of standard developed organizations that work and support the interop at scale. So this is a very, very, very good thing. But, and I do think that in our context, open badges today are the most fit, mature, and adopted recognition technology to support any micro-credentialing strategies, okay? Open badges being verifiable credentials. The one thing that I'm uh, working on and that I really want to uh, share today is uh, trying to make sense of credentials. And this is really about going inside the credentials. Ildiko shared about the European learning model, so these ontologies or, or information models, how do we talk about credentials? How can we have structured data that is standard and can be helpful in creating interesting, in supporting interesting um, services like job matching, job recommendations, but it's really making sense of the data inside the credentials. And so there are uh, a number of standards. Thank you for the slides. In fact, we, we, we don't have a problem with lack of standards. There's an abundance of them. The problem is the opposite. We have to create interop layers between them. And even when we look at semantics or, you know, data that makes sense, in Europe, we have the European learning model, great. But in the US, we have a thing called Credential Transparency Description Language, or CTDL. It is a similar ontology created by Credential Engine, which is the organization that Sharon mentioned before that does a lot of the, the research on it. So what um, I've been trying to do is to suggest that we need to map, create tooling that allows for the mapping of these ontologies across regions. So I really operate at the edges of my own organization, but in between the nodes. So in building the ecosystem, I think this is very important. Uh, one practical thing that I've done, and this QR code leads to a Google Sheet, is I looked at all the uh, current, um, let's say, guidance that we're, that we're getting from different regions around micro-credentials. Some of the micro-credential policies or frameworks come with annexes or technical documents that indicate standards elements. We've heard this from William this morning. So that's very important. And we want to be able to use mapping tooling to look at you know, what are the recommendations on the data elements of micro-credentials, both in uh, what they need to, uh, in, in how they are disclosed or, or published, and that is upstream and then downstream, that same information is possibly held in a credential. I'm really looking forward for contribution and help to this. So it's a Google Sheet. Come and talk to me about this. But this is the credential sense making. I'm moving on to the vision for the future, which may seem like hallucinations, but uh, here they are. And I wanted to uh, first take a bit of a step behind and then share something that you may know. It's called the Dunning Kruger effect. Effectively, it typically says that when a new technology or a new thing hits the market, we all feel like we're a super expert and that's easy, okay? And then that's our confidence level that just goes up, skyrockets. But we're not really competent on it. And as the time goes by, then we become more aware that, yeah, you know what, that's probably difficult. Or, you know what, I don't even know what that thing means. Micro-credentials. And so over time, I think, you know, we're gonna get the hang of it and eventually um, move toward more competence. This is a journey, and I feel that this is very true with micro-credentials and for anything that is a vision for the future. So we, we know that this is an effect. Um, the other thing that, you know, the other graph that is probably helpful here, it's uh, the hype cycle. It's a different curve, but if we have time, we'll talk about it. Now, I have a couple of mental models that I want to share with you how I think about the future. Uh, one is very simple, but credentials have to be usable. It means that you know, this is something that speaks to the product, that the platforms, they have to be fit for purpose, okay? The second is that they have to be useful, and this speaks to the learners. It, they have to unlock opportunities. They're not meant to stay in a wallet. They need to be consumed. They need to you know, you know, make something happen. I, even to William's point this morning, it's not about the definition of it. It's what can I do with micro-credentials? The third is they have to be used. This speaks to the issue around interoperability and the adoption of this so that we can build this ecosystem that we talk, that we talk about. Wow, the second one is a bit more involved. Um, this is good for, uh, you know, after a couple of beers, but the way I think about credential is there, a there is a layer zero, which is identity, 
right? Layer one is the credential. So this is what adds color to our digital identity, the credentials, the attestation that we make about ourselves. And layer two is reputation. Uh, to some extent, this is, you know, I, what Lena was, was talking about this morning resonated with me. You know, can, what, can we collect signals of performance on verifiable credentials that we have in our wallet? You know, I may have a diploma from 20 years ago. I've not practiced it. I, it's verifiable, people you know, should trust it, but I cannot do anything about it. So is it the competence-based or evidence-based that is interesting? We now live in an era with an abundance of data points. You know, that can provide that. Endorsements on LinkedIn, if you're familiar with praises, scores, upvotes, those are like nano-credentials that if attached to a credentials add, in a sense, let me see if I have it here. So, yeah, so skills are often referred to as currency. But if you add a reputation layer, so if you collect all these endorsements and just people that raise their hands when I said you know, that I am a self-attested uh, credential ecosystem mentalist, if we, if, we, if we can collect that data layer, that really is a signal of performance. And that will help us you know, be able to make statements that are more true about ourselves. So layer zero identity, layer one credentials, layer two reputation. Okay, this leads into the sacred geometry of trust, also known as uh, self-sovereign identity. Um, historically, this could be uh, connected to the stoicism, but the principles are, are, are great. Um, and this is what the, that triangle looks like. We, you have an issuer, and a holder, and a verifier. This is the triangle of trust. There's also a layer of trusted registries that speaks to the governance of this, but you know, essentially, you know, an issuing platform gives a learner a credential, they keep it in a wallet, and then they present it. So we have been building systems uh, claiming learner centricity as a design principles. To build learner records that are both interoperable and comprehensive, but have we really done that? So I feel that in, in the emerging uh, technology space, you know, verifiable credentials that you know, I spend a lot of time working on, there's an, an inconvenient truth, which is that while you know, adding novelty or that we are giving up utility for sovereignty. And so we are now building these mechanisms for learners to be able to be in control of their data and share the credentials. But what is changing is that the ceremony of sharing credentials is different. It's no longer the, student, the, the learner that shares with you a credentials with a link, as a link, for example, but it's the verifier, the HR department that has to request that credentials from you through a thing called a verifiable presentation request. That sort of adds friction in the verification process. And we've focused a lot on issuing credentials, you know, making them you know, compliant to open standards and wallets. But the real challenge for those credentials to become opportunities is at verification. That is when they turn into opportunities, whether along an employability pathway, if you're trying to get a job, or whether along an enrollment pathway. So I've had recent experience where we finally you know, issued verifiable credentials in a wallet, I have it here, I looked at him like, wow, I finally have one here. And then I go and share, and I cannot share it. I can only create a QR code. That felt like that credential is locked in my wallet forever. So we need to leave no one behind. As we build new technologies, we need to be very aware of going back and making sure that there is a transition between wherever people are, maybe PDFs or open badges into verifiable credentials. But the ceremony is different. Verifiers pick up, there is, we add friction. Verifiers need to play the game. And you know, in working even large scale projects, the first experience is that verifiers don't want to play. They're like, what, you tell me that now, how do I scale being able to request in the, to individual learners all these credentials? So there's a lot of work to be done on, this, on the verification side, on the consumption side of the equation. And the last thing I want to talk about is this idea of smart credentials and dumb learners. Um, I also would argue that you know, we have not really lived up to the uh, principles of learner centricity. All learners can do with credentials is share them. Is that value? I mean, is that all there is to it? I feel that value is really perceived downstream at the verifiers at the receiving end. There is some efficiency, clearly. I mean, we had security and privacy, but right now I think we should do more with it. And so. We are really an inflection point. This is the other uh, little uh, law that I want to share with you, which is Amara's law. So we tend to, as humans, overestimate the impact of technology in the short term, but underestimate it in, in the long term. What am I talking about? It's AI. 
So it's really, AI <laughs> is really, you know, the skills of 2023 should be asking better questions, also known as prompt engineering. This is really what it is about. So what I started to do is I started to feed ChatGPT XML data of a credential. And then I, I started to ask it, well, you know, could you create a job application based on this? This is what it came back with. If I was on my computer, I would show you on ChatGPT how fast this is. Um, pretty darn good. Or, well, you know what? What are the career pathways that I could go through with this credential? Or, I don't have it here, but create an admission application to a PhD program. Or, create a pitch for a startup that would leverage you know, the skills that I have. And look how this starts. Imagine a manufacturing process that is more efficient, more sustainable, blah, blah, blah. I mean, what if I had in my wallet a credentials that I can use to really help me in sending out tens, tens of applications you know, to colleges, PhD programs, or create job applications? That feels like it's utility. That feels like now we're adding value back to the learners. That feels like it's learner-centric. Just sharing, are we, are we continuing to talk about just sharing credentials, like when they have to become opportunities? I'm incredibly excited about you know, what we could do with this. And that's why I call them smart credentials. You know, they could do more with it. And the fact that we have them in our pocket is, is going to be pretty powerful. So I am going to be playing around with this. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah. So that is the big thing. I wanted to uh, tell you something else that I'm working on. We I started to talk about this with, with Lena in this Micro Credential Science Frontier LinkedIn group that we have been running for a while. We host chats, so we have come up with a, micro, with a, with a credentialing hype cycle. Uh, this is an open Google Doc. You can go in and just move things around, um, and you see some of, you know, some of the things that are there. This, this is not necessarily something that we want to publish, but just to get a sense for you know, how this ecosystem is moving and what's, in, what's coming from the future into the present. 